Well, we can do better than that. Good morning, Judson. Good morning. Welcome to Rise Chapel. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Alyssa Mitchell. I'm the vocational coordinator for the RISE program. Um, and the RISE program here on campus, for anyone who doesn't know, um, is a two-year certificate program for adults with uh, disabilities. And they come and they bless our campus um, and they just learn tons and we get them ready to have um, employment after um, they graduate here. So we love to have all of our RISE students here and we are all so blessed to lead you guys in worship today. Um, and so we just ask that you all, um, let's stand up and we're all going to worship together.
So this morning, we are going to focus a little bit on forgiveness, and you guys will hear a little bit more about um, how we want to focus on that. But I want to invite you guys in this moment, as we start singing the song Grace to Grace, to really think about what it is to forgive. When we're on a college campus and our lives are around church and other people who are believers, we throw around the word forgiveness a lot. So as we get into this song, before we actually get to start learning more about forgiveness, I want you to think about what that actually means, what the actual weight of the word forgiveness means. Let's think about that as we worship together. love endured that ancient cross how precious is my Savior's blood the beauty of heaven wrapped in my shame the image of love upon death's frame
more time. First year Rice student, and I have the honor to pray for our time here in Rice Chapel. Will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for giving the Rice program the opportunity to share our gifts and abilities with the Judson community. I pray that everyone will learn from the three different stories about forgiveness and know that everyone makes mistakes, big and small. Please bless these students and let them know that you still love us even when we mess up, and continue to bless them throughout the day. These students have incredible gifts to share with the world, and they were fearfully and wonderfully made in your image with no flaws because you, when you created us, you said, it is good. Please bless our time together as we learn from our peers. Amen. Judson, is this on? Should be on. Can everybody hear me? Is that working? Is it? There we go. I hear now. All right. Good morning, Judson. How's everybody doing? Everybody doing good? Can we can we give it up one more time for the band? You guys did a great job. We had we had five of our Rise students playing instruments or singing, and three of our Rise student advisors helping out with the band today. So you guys did an amazing job. Thank you so much for blessing us. Well, I am so happy to be with you this morning. If you don't know me, my name's Drew Burles. I'm the assistant director for the RISE program. Uh, and I am just so grateful that we get the opportunity to contribute to the chapel ministries here at Judson every year. And so I am so excited to be with you today. Originally, we wanted to share a passage of scripture that talk, talked about and focused on inclusion. Because inclusion is a major part of our program, and it was going to talk about how we should invite people from many different backgrounds and, and different uh, walks of life into the kingdom of God. It was going to be great. But God said, hey, we got some other plans for you. And he, he told us, we really need to focus on uh, the topic of forgiveness, because that's the message that we want to share with our Judson community. Uh, and so we have three of our RISE students who are going to come up and share their experience with forgiveness. Um, but before we, we do that, I wanted to kind of set the tone with a little bit of scripture beforehand. And so uh, before we jump into the scripture, can I get a show of hands? Let's, let's raise your hand if you've ever been in a situation where you have had to ask somebody for forgiveness or you have had to give somebody forgiveness. Raise your hand if, if, if that's you. Okay, if your hand's not up, I've already put you to sleep, or you're just not paying attention, because that everybody has been in that situation before. Um, we have all uh, had to deal with some conflict, and so part of the RISE program, part, part of the beautiful uh, part of our program is that we have the opportunity to help our students learn um, healthy social skills. And one thing that we tell our students all the time is that when you're living in community, when you're, when you're interacting with other human beings here on earth, you're going to have conflict. That's kind of inevitable. Everybody has conflict. And even if you hate conflict or you want to avoid drama at all costs, uh, conflict is inevitable. You're going to have it. And the only thing that uh, can restore a fractured relationship after conflict is forgiveness, whether it's you asking for forgiveness or giving that forgiveness to somebody else. And now, I'm not going to say that uh, forgiveness is always an easy thing to do. And if I'm being honest, I'd like to think that I'm kind of a forgiving person, okay? Um, I, I believe in second chances. I like to offer that because I, I want that to be offered to me, right? That's kind of something that, that we've been taught, that you want to treat others the way you, you want to be treated. Um, and so I hope that uh, a lot of you find yourself in that boat as well, 
that, that you think that you might be a forgiving person. Now, I know situations are different, and sometimes there's, there's extenuating circumstances, but generally, I would hope that everybody has at least the opportunity to say, yeah, I'll forgive you for, for something that you've done wrong. Now, the one thing that I run into a difficult situation with forgiveness is when somebody does something over and over and over again, and it just never seems to change. So maybe you can relate. Someone may come to me and they ask for forgiveness for the first time, and I'll be willing to forgive them. No problem. All right, things happen. Let's forgive that. But then it happens again. And then I'm like, okay, that still hurts, but I, I think I can forgive you. I think, I think we, can, we can move past this. And then it happens a third time. And I, you know, I'm hesitant, but maybe I'll forgive, but, but I'm skeptical that they're really caring or really wanting to change their behavior. And so if it keeps going and they keep doing it again and again and again, I'm less likely to forgive them in those situations. And so I was thinking about this and I was like, okay, if I were to go into Chicago and I were to walk the streets and say, all right, I survey 100 people asking them what they would do in that type of a situation, I'm sure I'd hear things like this. Well, you know, you, you can cut them out of your life. That person keeps doing that thing over and over again. Let's just, let's just cut them out. Or maybe they'd say something like, it's not worth your time to continue to forgive that person. Or maybe they'd say, you don't deserve to be treated that way. And so some of those statements are true. Nobody deserves to be uh, wronged over and over and over again. And even if we are willing to forgive somebody for those situations, our relationships are bound to be different with them. And it might be best to distance ourselves from those people. And so that may be true. But if we are Christ followers, we are people who want to follow the way of Jesus, we need to look somewhere else for our guidance in how to interact with people in regards to forgiveness. And so I'd like to uh, read a little bit from the Gospel of Luke with you guys um, to hear what Jesus tells his followers to do when we are uh, coming to a place where we have to forgive someone. So if you wanted to follow along, we're going to read Luke chapter 18, starting at verse 21. Here's what it says. Then Peter came to him, this is Jesus, then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how often should I forgive someone who sinned against me? Seven times? No, not seven, Jesus replied, but 70 times seven. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven can be compared to a king who decided to bring his accounts up to date with servants who, who had borrowed money from him. In the process, one of the debtors was uh, brought was brought in who owed him millions of dollars. He couldn't pay it, so the, the master ordered that he be sold, along with his wife, his children, and everything he owned to pay the debt. But the man fell down before the master, and he begged him, please, be patient with me. I will pay it all. Then the master was filled with pity for him, and he uh, released him and forgave his debt. But when the man left the king, he went to a fellow servant and he, who owed him a few thousand dollars. And he grabbed him by the throat and demanded instant payment. His fellow servant fell down before him and begged for a little more time. Be patient with me. I will pay it, he pleaded. But his creditor uh, wouldn't wait and had him arrested and put into prison until the debt could be paid in full. When some of the other servants saw this, they, uh, they were very upset. And they went to the king and told him everything that, he had, that had happened. Then the king called in the man. Uh, he had forgiven and said, you evil servant, you, I forgave you the tremendous debt because you pleaded with me. Shouldn't you have mercy on the, your fellow servant just as I had mercy on you? Then the angry king sent the man to prison to be tortured until he could pay uh, his entire debt. That's what my heavenly father will do to you if you refuse to forgive your brothers and sisters from your heart. And so there's just a few things that I wanted to point out before we hear from our students um, in regards to these few verses. First of all, let's talk about the, the very first few verses of the passage. Uh, Jesus' response to Peter's question about the number of times that we should forgive someone. When he responds uh, with a specific number, that's not meant to put a limit on our forgiveness. It's actually meant to do the opposite. Uh, Peter was thinking that he was generous with saying, I'm going to forgive this person seven times. Back in those days, it used to be um, kind of the, the Jewish rule of law or the, the um, 
you know, the rule of thumb, that three times is, is the, the magic number. You can forgive somebody three times. And, and Peter was saying, no, I'm going to forgive them seven times. That's so much more generous than three. And Jesus turns around and he says, no, 70 times seven. Now, that's not saying that 490 is the magic number. And on the 491st time that somebody's asking for forgiveness, you can say no. What it's saying is that the posture of our hearts, the posture that we should be taking of forgiveness is one of a continual nature. We should continually be forgiving those who have sinned against us. Jesus wants us to reflect the same posture of forgiveness that's modeled by God. And that's what the entire parable that he's going into about uh, the king forgiving the debts, that's, that's what that whole response is about. When we think about the forgiveness that God gives us, it's like the king who forgave the servant's debt. The servant didn't deserve that forgiveness. He didn't even earn it. But it was given to him anyway. But the king's expectation of that servant was that he would turn around and reflect that same level of forgiveness to everybody else around him. Even when we are continually sin, um, even when we are continually sinning against God, He continues to pursue us and forgive us of those sins. We should be showing that same willingness to forgive others who have wronged us. Now, again, I'm not going to say that that's an easy thing to do. On the contrary, that is very difficult for us to do. It can be tiring to continually forgive someone. We can feel like we're being taken advantage of or that we're not being respected in the way that we feel like we should be respected. But this is the posture that God wants us to have, a posture of continual forgiveness. And so we've asked three of our RISE students to share of some of their experiences with forgiveness. Uh, one of our students is going to share about a time where uh, they had to forgive somebody for something they've done wrong. Another is going to share a time where they had to humble themselves and ask for forgiveness. And we recognize that sometimes the person that we need to forgive the most, and sometimes the one that's most difficult to forgive, is ourselves. And so we have uh, our last RISE student going to be sharing about his continual efforts on forgiving himself. And so we pray that these testimonies are a blessing to you and that they prompt you to meditate on how you can adopt this posture of continual forgiveness in your own lives. Thank you. So I'm Jacob Chapman, and I'll be uh, reading Ephesians 4.32. It says, Instead, be kind to each other, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. My friend Kelly would like to share a story about a time when she needed to forgive someone else. I need to forgive my dad because it's not the best bond for me to have. He has been hitting my mom and me. He has been drinking too much, and whenever he drinks too much, he cusses farewell at my mom and me. He told me when I was a son, not a daughter. He's not the best husband for my mom to have. My husband treated him bad, he takes my mom for granted. <clears throat> my mom had a miscarriage have a little baby instead of me. The baby had died in the room. I almost had a brother or a sister. My mom has, was smoking before she had me. It's hard to forgive her too. My mom was, I love my mom, but I want my dad out of the picture out of my life. I feel bad for my family with all the going flu. I pray to God to change my dad and my mom's life around because I want my, change my mom, my dad's life. His spirit of God will help change my dad's my dad told me, my mom will always take care of me when my dad is not around. My dad dropped my health and my child support. i always been tired with my mom, and she always be there with me when I need it. I forgive my dad all the bad things he did to my family. I love him in a good way, and I am working to still forgive him still. Thank you for hearing my speech about my dad. He means so much to me. Thank you so much.
Пять вопросов. Пипах и кончики здесь. Гонят паспорт, под их ты конфесс. Чонь from them, they will receive mercy. Perhaps joy is the thing when we do something wrong. God tells us to confess and ask for forgiveness. Ellie is going to shoot about our time when she needed to ask someone for forgiveness. I've been nervous through, guys. <sighs> um, hi, everybody. I wanted to share about a time when I had to be forgiven by someone else. When I was in one of my professor's office, I looked at my phone because I felt embarrassed during a, during a situation she and I had because uh, uh, because of that we were talking. Then eventually, my professor asked me to look straight at her because I thought she was frustrated with me. During our first semester, I turned my back to her and, uh, and walked away. I thought being forgiven is necessary uh, uh, later throughout the day because of what I did. I don't think I did turn my back on my professor, but I did. I said this maybe out loud. Well, that's harder than I expected it, it would be. Uh, and at that very moment, I never knew right away, I never knew right away what she felt after I left her office. I had lots of thoughts about my behavior I knew what I did wrong, and I felt bad about it. I went back to my professor's office because I knew her door was open. Who knew, who knew her door were, Who knew her door was open? I went in, and I confessed what I did wrong. And for me, it was difficult. It was difficult, but I did what was right. I wasn't expecting anything right away, but something happened. I felt guilty because of what I did. I know she was she was trying so hard. She was trying so hard to help me in our conversation, but I was so hesitant about it. From now on, I won't do that anymore. I have asked her if she could accept my serious apology, and she did. I knew. Well, I knew I should have realized what I did. Also, that is not okay. That is not okay at all because I lost my patience with her when I turned my back on her. I had to expect some relief at a time to make it right when I was in her office. I did what was I did what was the next right thing after my class was done that morning. My professor gave me a second chance to make it right until she accepted my apology. She forgave me, and for quite some time, I felt, I felt better, and, and I wanted to thank her for that. I really do because it meant a lot to me. I was calm when I was around her, and I am very glad, I'm very glad she helped me to make me feel better until she forgave me. Eventually, I felt a lot better. I am forgiven, and I am redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Thank you. Corinthians 5.17 says, 
This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone, a new life has begun. Please welcome Jalen to the stage to share about how he is working on forgiving himself. <laughs> Hello there, my friends at Jensen University. <laughs> Before I like to read, I have to ask one question. How are you all guys doing at Johnson University? <laughs> Today, I'd like to share my testimony to you all because it means so much when I feel things where I've been forgiven of the Lord Jesus. <laughs> all right, well, let me begin my topic, forgiveness. As I'd like to share my testimony about how I've been forgiven by God, when I was feeling down as a as I was a sinner, I looked at myself of what has my life from the past become so dreadful and very mistakable. I believed and thought it was my anger and frustration <laughs> ruined my life a long time ago before I went to Judson University. God has already saw me as a heap, and he appears my, about my prayers as I kept pleasing on him to make my life to be happy and positive and joyful again and reborn again. <laughs> and he's given me one more chance and let me be, be myself again. After that moment, Jesus guides me free as I walk humbly toward to his righteous path to his righteous kingdom. In other words, when I die, I want to see my family again. Uh, where was I? Oh, yes, right. Um, I, I kept praying to God every day and night. Right. God is our Father and Creator of all of us from heaven and earth, and He lives throughout for our eternal life, and He forgives us all of our sins and leading us to not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. He made me so special. Uh, I'm uh, in unique, wonderful, loving human being. And Jesus had died for all of our sins, including mine. He's still God's only son who cares and believes that we're trying to be in the name of our angels from heaven and be accepted to heaven. Uh, now, my question to my, uh, my answer, uh, uh, question to myself, how do I forgive myself? Well, I'll tell you this, my friends and uh, uh, teachers of Jensen University. For the time in my life, the next time when I made a mistake, I pray, ask God to forgive me as much as I like to be forgiven myself. When Jesus loves me every day, and, I, and also I watch out and be alert myself. When I'm around with my friends and uh, other places around here at Judson before I graduate. Uh, let's see. Once I give myself a chance and learn the ways what God tells me to do in my ear, I give myself to victory to Jesus Christ and be myself forever and ever. And believe me, he'll do for you just like he did it for me. It is no secret what God could do to all of us and he could do for all of us and around the world. My advice to you, my friends and people at Judson and teachers, and alumni, whatever, whatever I'm I'm, I'm saying this, is trust God in yourself and believe what he can do for you like me. And as I go out to my journey, keep the faith in the Lord in his hands and on his glorious path that will lead you the way to heaven. Thank you all so much. God bless you in your hearts. Thank you guys for listening to these um, wonderful testimonies and thank you um, Kelly and Allie and Jalen um, for sharing your testimonies with us.
Um, as we know, it's not easy to get up and, and share some of those pieces of our hearts. Um, and so, um, as you guys got to be blessed by these testimonies, we now want to turn this around and allow you guys to have a little bit of time to reflect on what kind of forgiveness you need in your life um, in the, at this time. Is that, whether that looks like you need to forgive somebody in your life who's caused you um, hard times, someone who's caused you pain, um, maybe you are needing to ask for forgiveness from someone. You know that you know you have stumbled and you're trying to find the courage to ask for that forgiveness. Or maybe you're sitting in these chairs and you feel the guilt of some things that you have done and you cannot give yourself grace. So when you guys came in today, you were given a half sheet of paper. Um, that sheet of paper gives you time uh, areas in all three of those time spaces to really reflect on those things for yourself. So we want to give you guys just a few minutes um, between you and the Lord to reflect on those ideas of forgiveness and see really what you need for yourself. This is a time of where you get to cultivate your relationship with the Lord and look at what forgiveness is in your own lives. So take the next few minutes. If you didn't get a half sheet, um, you may have to kind of share with a friend. Um, if we have any extras, we'll walk down the aisle and you can kind of wave um, and we'll hand those out. But if you don't have them, look up on a friend's um, and take some time to reflect uh, with the Lord. All right, so as you're taking a little bit more time to reflect, we're going to move into a time of um, a last uh, worship song together. Um, and we are going to be blessed. Our RISE students have learned the sign language for this song. Um, and because we want to show that Jesus is for everyone, whether you can hear or you can't, whether you can see or you can't, whether you can walk and run or you're in a wheelchair, whether you learn like everyone else or you have different abilities Jesus is for everyone and that's what we're here today to show you guys that Jesus is yours he's mine he's the sinners he's with us and he's ours when we're doing well when we're doing we're going through hardships 
And so we want to be in this space together. And I ask that you stand to worship with us if you are done with your reflection time. And be blessed not only with a worship song as we all worship together, but be blessed by the sign language that our RISE students have worked really, really hard to learn. So let's worship together.
Thanks, guys.